Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matt from Rocky's War Room. And today I have another Let's Build video for you. This time is for Pike and Shot, the 28 millimeter uh, 30 years war slash uh, English Civil War miniatures game. Uh, well, Pike and Shot, it covers a big period, but uh, I'm using these for my English Civil War. Uh, and these are the Armored Pikemen. Uh, comes in a 12 metal miniatures. They're 28 millimeter. I love the metal ones. They're easy to do, easy to easier to paint. They come in one piece. So you don't have to do a lot to them. Uh, now uh, on the back of the box, you see how pretty, it, uh, just how beautiful they really are. It looks like you got a uh, a bunch of armored pike uh, with their helmets, which is great, uh, and their armor. So these are all armored. Um, Compared to uh, in the box sets, you you can make uh, you know about half and half uh, of armored pikemen, but this one is a full set, uh, and it comes with uh, some really fantastic pikes. So uh, down here it gives you a little description. Uh, the pike blocks are the queen of the battlefield um, in the 17th century. Solid block of the tallest and stoutest of infantry at the basis for offensive and defensive actions. So it gives you a little bit of description. Tells you a little bit about them. Uh, it's uh, started as 16 foot ash wooden shafts and uh, secured sharp metal spears, uh, spearhead, giving the pikemen a lethal reach when massed together and ability to fend either enemy pikemen off or often most massed cavalry. So uh, they're pretty awesome. Uh, let's take a look at what's inside. All right. Oh, cool. So we have what look like 25 millimeter or 20 millimeter. That looks actually closer to 20 millimeter. Uh, so they can fit in blocks of 40 mil. Uh, bases that come with this kit, which is uh, wonderful because if I individually base them, I can use them for skirmish type games like uh, Pike Lim Pikeman's Lament or uh, some, something along those lines. Also, uh, if you do glue them on here and you decide not to use these bases and you want to put them on 40 mil bases, this right here will give you something to hold on to uh, or to keep them standing up straight to grab grab a hold of them, you know, something they stick on. Um, like I got these, these right here. Um, I stick the miniature on just like that. Um, and you can tear them off with no problems and put them on a 40 mil base if you really want to. But uh, for the purpose of this video, we're gonna, we're gonna glue them onto their MDF bases because it came with the kit. So, um, <clears throat> wow, there's all the minis. Looks like they're all in one piece. I like that. <laughs> oh, and there's the pikes. Now, <clears throat> as far as these pikes go, um, these are basically the mainstay pikes that I see come out of Warlord, and I love them. I absolutely love them. Uh, the reason being is they're much, much sturdier than, say, your cast metal. Uh, much harder uh, than your cast metal. And they have a nice pointy... Uh, watch your fingers uh, point on them so, and they're they're very very sturdy uh, compared to the cast metal stuff so they're very hard and they're hard to bend but if you do bend them they're hard to bend back so don't do that um, but they're very sh ow, they're very sharp <laughs> so we have all these pikes here I love those pikes I'm glad it's included in this kit so if I can get the sponge out we'll get the minis out and take a look at them. There we go. Just dump them out there. All right. They are all in one piece. Oh, thank goodness. Even their plumes on the back of their helmets. I love it. What a nice kit already. <laughs> all right. This guy's got a sword. See how this is easy to bend, but these pikes are not as easy to bend so very sturdy so here they are got to bend a few of the swords there he's holding a pike from the looks of it all right or he can hold the pike right there right in the front and i believe if we look at the back of the box there that's this fellow right here <clears throat> so let's see this guy's holding a, what looks like a pike as well. Where would he be? I actually generally use the box as a reference to see how uh, they possibly, he's at, this is one of the guys that's holding it on, on his shoulder straight up. 
So um, to kind of help me out to see where they put the pikes. And it's very helpful. Here's that guy I had a little bit ago. There's another same guy. It looks like the same mold here. So you find your back row, your front row, etc. There's a little flash on these guys too. Very nice sculpts though. They're very nice. I really like these. They seem to have more character on the metal ones than they do the plastic ones. Um, and I've always thought that anyway. Any Most of the metal ones I've, I've found are like that. So, we got this guy holding a pike. It's kind of the same pose as this. And from the looks of it, we're going to probably have to drill some holes um, in their hands. Most of the time you can do that with your knife. Um, but these I may have to grab a hand drill just to, just to make the initial hole and push those pikes through, which ain't really that big of a deal uh, if I have to. So we got those guys. We got this fella in the back. So just organizing them in general is very helpful if you can organize the sculpts of where they're going to sit in the um, in the lineup. So this is our fellow with the hat. That's probably our captain or the leader. He's wearing a helmet. He has the helmet on the on his back there. And this is the uh, another plume. So. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first show you the tools I normally use to put things together with. Uh, and then I will put it together on camera there in fast forward uh, fashion. So you guys can kind of see how I do it. And then I'll come back and tell you how I did it and what troubles I possibly had with this kit. So uh, I'll be back in a second.
All right, there you have it. There is the armored pike block. Uh, oh, on their individual bases. Um, really easy to put together. Um, I have to say, really easy metals to put together. Uh, they're very, very easy to do. Um, <clears throat> don't let the hand drill you saw uh, discourage you from getting this kit, for sure. Uh, don't let the hand drill uh, discourage you, period. Because I will say, um, when, you're, when you're drilling out the pikes, you want to use a drill bit that is about the thickness of a paper clip. Um, if you get the uh, Citadel one like I have there, or an aftermarket one, which would probably be a little bit more cheaper, um, just find one that's, at the, that's a little bit bigger than your pikes here, or the, the thickness a little bit bigger than a, a paper clip. So uh, that's really ideally what you need. And also there's already a notch on the inside of the hand here for you to uh, um, put the tip of your drill into uh, and it kind of uh, follows like a guide uh, where to put the hole. So also when you're doing these angled pikes, you want to drill uh, at the angle, aim towards his backhand, which is holding the pike um as well so um these guys they went together super simple super easy uh no sweat um and these these pikes are very very sturdy i'll tell you another little thing that i did here is once i push them in uh if you have a bad angle there's no worries if you grab it by the hand here and you push here you're going to get a little glue on your fingers but it, this this stuff is so sturdy you can bend this arm back far enough to where it meets the other arm with the pike. So uh, they're, they're really sturdy pikes, and I've, ha I've had lots of experience with them with my Polish lancers. Um, uh, I use these lances, and I put little flags on the end of it for uh, World War II, and they're very, very hardy, very, very sturdy. Uh, they fall over. They stay there. They keep their shape. Um, they don't bend really unless you do something really forceful to them. So the ones in the back were really easy. I just had to put the pike on in their arm. There's a little notch for the pike on their shoulder. Uh, real simple. Uh, now you want to consider your ranking up. Um, on single bases like this, it's a little bit tougher because you got to get them in a certain space uh, to where they're not on top of each other. Uh, the way I accomplished this is I tore this one off the base and I moved them over. Uh, I tore this one off the base, which their MDF, if you catch it in time, you can break them right off at the base there. Just be very careful when you're doing that. Um, but I was able to work them around. Uh, it might be worthy saying to, uh, um, before you glue them on the base, to put all the pikes on and then kind of arrange these the way you want them. Um, exactly. So I gave them a pretty natural look. Uh, I'm going to paint them on these MDF stands. I, I, I'm probably going to leave them on their little uh, 25s and just get a, um, a movement tray of some kind, some sort of MDF movement tray that I can magnetize them into. That way I can use these guys for uh, skirmish games like Pikeman's, Pikeman's Lament. Um, I like that idea. And if I have one whole group, uh, a pike, uh, this could be two different units of in, in that game. So, And I can still use them for my, uh, my pike and shot rule set. So, but... Uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, they went together really, really easily. It's a really nice kit. The detail on these guys is just awesome down to the face, all their implements, all their extras they have on them, uh, their armor, even their little buttons or uh, the buttons of the seams on the pants you can see there. Lots more detail than, than you expect. So, but uh, all in all, good kit, really good kit. Um, I had fun building it. But that's all I have. Thank you for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Please tell a friend. Please spread the word for me. I'd really appreciate that. Like this video. Leave me some comments. Tell me th what you think of these pikemen. And last but not least, from me to you, ta-ta, and I'll catch you in my next video.